Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. We're very excited to have the entire team of the uh, SCPGA Junior, uh, Junior Tour Division. We have uh, Kevin Smith. He is our Junior Golf Director. We also have Eddie Rodarty, who is a Junior Golf Manager. He's also uh, a director of outreach and inclusion. He's joined by, they're joined by William Yang, who's an assistant junior golf director, and Re uh, Raynard Belmonte, who's a senior junior golf coordinator. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very, very much for uh, being with us this morning. A big, uh, a big push today, and we want to thank all of the section uh, membership for joining us on this morning's Catalyst. Uh, 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 I think there's a big demand, the education uh, committee thinks there's a big demand to promote awareness amongst the SCPGA membership in terms of what our three junior tours and our junior golf programming and curriculum really entails. I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of us out there that are, that are working, that uh, are teaching juniors and coaching juniors and communicating with parents. And we, we don't have all the details at our fingertips in terms of uh, what our junior pro uh, golf program entails. The, the, the information's there. Uh, the, the guys do a wonderful job of promoting, managing, and organizing, facilitating these uh, uh, tournaments and events and all this programming, but uh, an opportunity to educate our section membership to make it easier for us to promote our junior tours to our students and our families that we serve uh, and uh, to access uh, websites and registrations and getting kids enrolled in our programs. We figured it was a, a good opportunity for us to get the junior golf team to come on the Catalyst and do a little education on the Southern California Junior Tour. So without any further ado, uh, Kevin, uh, I think you'll be driving the slide deck today. Um, take it away. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right, thank you very much, John. And thanks for everybody for attending today. Uh, we look forward to this. And hopefully by the end of the day, you'll all have a little bit better understanding for our Junior Tour. I'm sure most of our section members do uh, already, either to some degree or quite extensively. So. We hope to provide some more information, some good details for you all, um, ways that we can improve and better service you all with your juniors and the operations that you're running as well. So at this time, I'm going to start by just going through our slide deck here, um, trying to provide a synopsis of our junior tour, um, starting with our pyramid, which uh, goes into some detail about how kids get introduced to the game of golf at the very entry level. As you see at the very bottom of that pyramid, that entails um, golf enrichment programs in the community, uh, corporate events, and events like, or excuse me, programs like SCGA Golf Pass. These are opportunities for kids to get their hands on a golf club, generally for the first time, hopefully to fall in love with the game or at least begin that passion. So that's, again, our intro to, to golf at the section level. Um, as they move on and continue to advance and develop in their game, they might uh, enroll in programs through the PJ of America player development programs, such as PJ Junior League, Drive, Chip, and Putt, and other various programs that are out there, too, that might help them learn to play and learn some of the fundamentals of the game. And this is going to further enhance and develop uh, their golfing abilities. From there, uh, most players will then learn uh, through the help of PGA professionals and instruction, whether it be golf camps, clinics, events, one-on-one uh, -on -one instruction with PGA members. So this is obviously where they're really learning how to participate and how to play the game, all the ins and outs, not just their golf swing, but of course, management and things of that nature. So this is such a, a helpful and vital step for all players to really take their game to the next level and to further develop and enhance their ability. So from there is where our program uh, jumps in there. Um, we have three levels to our program. We're going to get into a lot more details about those three levels here shortly as we um, dive in further to our JDT, our Players Tour, and our Toyota Tour Cup. But starting with the JDT, this is our entry level to competitive golf. At this stage, players know how to play the game already. They've got some experience on the golf course. They need to know some of the basics, obviously, at that stage. Um, but this is a more fun and relaxed environment for kids that are just beginning their junior golf competitive career. So there's some, some rules and regulations we have in place to make it a little bit more relaxed in that sense, which um, Eddie will go over here shortly as he covers the JDT. But from there, there's a scoring requirement to move up to the players tour. And once they meet that requirement, 
they can then jump in and start playing in our more intermediate level competitions. Um, the Players Tour, again, is pretty advanced in the sense that uh, kids are pretty skilled at this stage. They must have competitive experience to join this program. This isn't for beginners. And secondly, you're going to get a pretty wide variety of skill levels, kids that can break par pretty consistently, all the way to kids that might shoot in the, the high 80s, low mid 90s on occasion as well. So pretty wide variety of skill level. And from there, most of those players are really trying to work their tails off to qualify and advance to the Toyota Tour Cup. Uh, that is the ultimate proving ground. It is, um, you know, the similar to the AJGA on a national scale, but over here on the West Coast, this is the, the most elite level program that is offered, essentially. These kids, um, you know, a wide variety, again, of uh, skill level, but the majority of them are going to go play college golf. The majority of them are shooting under par pretty consistently, and you're going to see a lot of kids uh, go on to have very, very successful collegiate, amateur, and even professional careers as well. So that gives kind of a brief overview of our program uh, from a 30,000-foot view, as well as some of the programs that um, precede ours as well and how kids get into the game. So I'll turn it over to the next slide here as we go through some of the demographics of our program as well. Our junior tour was established back in 1948. This is actually our 75th year anniversary, which is pretty cool for us. Um, we also have over 3,700 members now, which is a record high. Previously, we had um, in the 3,500 range last year, which was also record high. So our program has continued to grow. And with that growth, comes more and more tournaments that have to be conducted as well to meet the demand for our members. So we are now hosting about 420 tournaments annually. Just two years ago, that was about 290. So we've increased by about 130 tournaments just in the last two years. And we'll be increasing to probably about 440 or so next year as well. So it seems like that number continues to go up each and every year. Most of our tournaments, though, are conducted in the LA, Orange County, and Inland Empire areas. We do some programming up in Ventura, out in the desert, and in North San Diego, but it's pretty seldom. The majority of our events are centered in that LA metro area and the Inland Empire areas as well. And we do provide this uh, membership to juniors that are between the ages of 5 to 19, uh, 5 the beginning level of the JDT, um, and then 19 uh, at the Players Tour and Toyota Tour Cup levels. 42% of our members are between the ages of 15 to 19. That number has actually decreased over the last few years. It used to be higher, about 47, 48%. Um, we actually think that's kind of a good thing because it means that we're getting a lot more of the younger kids involved in the game. As you'll see here, we now have 32% of our members between the ages of 12 to 14 and 26% between the ages of 5 to 11. And that's the, the demographic right there that's grown the most over the past few years is that 5 to 11 range. And especially since the JDT has expanded and further developed and increased the number of events that we host, um, so we're pretty happy about that because it's, you know, continued success for years to come with those young kids coming on in. So, Kevin, you said that the uh, 15 to 19 um, age bracket has decreased over the last couple of years since the since 2020. Decreased in the sense of percentage, not in not decreased in terms of total numbers. But as the program has grown, we've seen that growth come from the younger age groups. So the percentage of 15 to 19 has decreased. Uh, but the the overall number is still increasing on a yearly basis. Fantastic. Yeah, good question. Thanks, John. And as we move down there too, you'll see sixty about sixty five percent male to thirty five percent female. That's pretty standard. Again, that number used to be a lot less, maybe some five ten years ago. It's kind of hovered right around that number for the past five years. But we hope to see uh, again more growth from the girls divisions in our program. Uh, that's something that we always work on as well. As we segue over to the right-hand side of that page, you'll see some alumni news. This is something that we're extremely proud of. It sort of shows um, essentially the success of our program and how hard we all work to uh, provide the best service we can for our juniors. And we have a lot of very successful alumni who've made it to the PGA and LPGA tours. Uh, nearly 20 alumni on the PGA tour currently. And out of the top 10 in the official World Golf rankings, three of them are from our junior tour program with Cantlay, um, Xander Shoffley, and Max Homa. And we also have five alumni who are competing on the U.S. Ryder Cup team next week. Uh, the three mentioned above, as well as Ricky Fowler and Colin Morikawa as well. So a lot of great players who have come through our program. We also have 17 alumni on the LPGA Tour, which we're very happy and proud of. Five of those players are in the top 40 of the Rolex World Golf Rankings. Uh, those players include Lilia Vu, who is 
uh, was number one in the world for a short while now, number two, but as well as Danielle Kang, Rose Zhang, Angel Yin, and Andrea Lee, and all five of those uh, ladies are also representing us at the Solheim Cup this week. I believe that begins um, tomorrow or this evening. So we're very excited for uh, our programs, all that our alumni have done and are continuing to do. Uh, we also have six out of the 12 on the U.S. Junior Ryder Cup team are from our program and five girls uh, on the U.S. Solheim Cup team that are from our program as well. So we've got a lot of very successful juniors out there playing at a very, very high level. So with that, again, just some uh, basic information about our program as we get started. I'm going to kick it over now to Eddie as we get sort of into more details about our JDT specifically. Thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you everybody for attending. We're glad you're here. My name is Eddie Rodarte, and I'm a PGA member and uh, manager for the JDT. Along with me is uh, a gentleman named Mike Sapel, who is our JDT coordinator, and together we uh, manage and guide the JDT, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the JDT is, as Kevin mentioned, the entry-level program to tournament golf. Uh, these young players are uh, they're they're a lot of fun to watch. They're great little swings, but they don't know really anything about being in a golf tournament. So this is their first opportunity to understand and get into what uh, tournament golf is all about. So it's geared towards uh, individuals with little or no tournament experience. Uh, we call it the teaching tour. Uh, it's a very hands-on tour as far as our staff is concerned. We're out there uh, assisting them as much as we can, uh, letting them know all everything that they they don't know. Uh, when you arrive at the first tee, you're supposed to have a couple of tees in your pocket, a ball, a ball marker, a debit tool, a golf ball. Uh, so, you know, they have to be taught these things, where to stand, where not to stand. What is ready golf and how do you, how does ready golf work? Um, what, how do you take a drop correctly from a cart path or what's the procedure with the penalty area? So all these things uh, happen on the JDT. So um, it, they're nine hole golf tournaments. Uh, we try very hard to uh, to assist them and, and actually educate parents as well when they're out there watching their kids play. Uh, it is a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere on the JDT because we utilize a double par plus one scoring rule. Our object is not to identify a player's ability at age nine, but to, again, show them what it's like to be in a golf tournament. So if a player is on a par three hole and uh, they're, they're not in the hole on that seventh stroke, they're just told to pick up the golf ball, uh, tell their marker what their score is, and then move on to the next hole. We play mostly uh, uh, executive and uh, par three length golf courses. Uh, we have over 1600 members annually, uh, over 180 golf tournaments a year. Uh, so it's a, there's a wide variety out there. We do, uh, we're primarily on weekends and we play uh, five to seven and uh, five to seven boys and girls who are allowed to have a parent caddy. And then uh, along with them at that same golf course, eight to 11 boys and girls divisions. And then simultaneously at another facility, we have 12 to 14 boys and girls and then 15 to 18 boys and girls. So uh, they are all trying very hard to get to the next level. And in order to do that on the JDT, a player must be nine years old and have six scores of six over par or better in JDT events. There's no time limit on that. Um, some players get through it fairly quickly. Other players, it could take a couple of years. But once they achieve that uh, goal, then they can go and fill out the application, um, put all their information on and send it to the player store management team where they will uh, look at it and then approve and then they can go ahead and move up to the player store. So um, it's it, it's not designed to be competitive, but it has to com become competitive and they have a lot of fun out there. Eddie, with, so that, the with that being said, uh, where the JDT is, a, it's a developmental tour, the double par plus one, uh, and the uh, caddies up until the age of uh, seven. Has there been discussion on the JDT level to allow caddies to go into uh, divisions older than seven? Because many of the other tours that are around do allow caddying uh, in older age groups. Has that discussion come up and do we look at that as an advantage or a disadvantage in terms of growing our program? Thank you for that. It's a good question. Yes, it has come up and we are actually discussing it now. Uh, we'll be getting together in the next uh, several days, couple of weeks, hopefully, to have that discussion amongst the management team and the team here at the SCPGA. Um, we know that um, it is uh, happening in other uh, associations, and so we're taking a good look at it, and uh, we're going to see, uh, you know, the pros and cons of it, and uh, hopefully we'll come to a decision. But yes, we are discussing it, and it is something we are uh, looking closely at. 
Thank you. So after these youngsters get uh, uh, get their six qualifying scores, uh, they can then segue up to the players tour where competition becomes uh, a, a quite uh, quite deeper in the pool, competitive pool. And so uh, it's a lot of fun. And I'll turn that over to uh, William Yang, who is the uh, players tour manager and the, uh, assist the assistant director for junior golf. Will? Thank you so much, Eddie. And uh... Just want to thank everyone again for joining us on this catalyst call. Um, before I begin, like Eddie mentioned, my name is William Yang. I'm the Assistant Junior Golf Director. I've been with the section for around three years now. With me running the Players Tour is the coordinator, Cole Alexander. He's been with us a little bit less than a year. Um, if you guys ever come to our events, please say hi to us. We're more than happy to answer your questions. So to begin with the players tour, like Eddie mentioned, and like Kevin mentioned earlier, it's going to be the intermediate intermediate level tournament for or tour for our juniors. Um, if anything, you can think of it as a flagship program of our junior tour. We have uh, over 1,700 members right now. We're still growing. We roughly have around two to three new members every day since August. Um, with that, of the members, for the players tour in order to play in it, you need to essentially be 9 to 18 years old. Um, or to qualify, like Eddie mentioned, from the JDT, you need six rounds of six over par or better. In terms of the competition, the 9 through 11 division will always play nine holes, and the 12 through 18 divisions will always play 18 to 36 holes. Of those events, we actually have, we host around 200 events, over 200 events annually. Um, we have at least four events per weekend, and then during the summer, we have two to three during the weekdays. In addition to that, for our two-day events, we actually host 14 of them. We have five in the spring, four in the summer, and five in the fall. Um, along with those two-day events, we also have three season-ending series championships, which I'll go into uh, a little further here. So essentially, for our series championships, you need to qualify for these multi-day events. You need to ascend, um, place in the top certain number of points uh, in terms of uh, your age division. So... For the boys, it's 27, the top 27 players. For the girls, it's going to be the top 18. Um, in this series championship, it's um, I would say it's more of an elevated event just because a lot of the, uh, the players that play in it are champions of our um, single day events. So it's highly competitive in the series championships. And along with that, we do offer an exemption that I'll dive into a little bit further here. For all of our multi day events, along with the Tour de Tour Cup that Reynard will dive into in a second here. They are submitted to JGS and AGA for PVE status. So for JGS, it's essentially a ranking system um, that ranks all of junior golf throughout the entire uh, nation. Um, it's a good resource for college coaches to look at in terms of recruiting. And then for the AGA PVE status, it essentially gives players that play in multi-day events stars that they can use towards getting uh, or towards uh, applying for AGA events. There's a lot of AGA events that require a certain number of stars that you need in order to play in it. Um, in terms of the Tour de Tour Cup, so when you're on the Players Tour, um, it's highly competitive, like Eddie mentioned. In order to move up to the Tour de Tour Cup, there's actually four different pathways um, listed below there. Um, the first two right there will be the Season Series Points Race and Championship. So for the Series Points Race, for every single day event and multi-day event, players are awarded points based off of their standing. Um, typically, it'd be the top 10 players. For multi-day events, is usually the top 20. Um, in terms of the qualifications for the boys, it's or for every division, it's roughly four to two players that qualify into the Tour de Tour Cup for the points race. Keep in mind that a lot of these players play in at least 25 plus events um, during the season. So like I mentioned, highly competitive, um, a lot of golf. And from what I've seen, it's helped them grow into really good players. A lot of the players that move up to the Tour de Tour Cup through the points race actually do very well. In terms of the series championship, which is the uh, the end of the season multi-day event, we do offer exemptions to the overall champion and runner-up. Similar to the points race, it's hard to get into the series championship. In order to win it, it's another thing. Um, like I mentioned, players that come out of these two um, um, these two pools are typically they typically succeed quite well when they make it to the Tour de Tour Cup. The third way to qualify to the Tour de Tour Cup will be through single-day qualifiers. I like to imagine or, um, I, you know, I would just say, think of it as like a Monday qualifier. So essentially you play in the single day qualifier. If you place, I want to say it's in the top three or six, depending on the gender, you earn exemption to a single day or a single tour to tour cup event. 
And from there, you can earn an exemption, which we now, again, we'll dive into in a second here. Um, this is, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to get into, into the Tour de Tour Cup, just because you essentially have to play well in two events. So in that single day qualifier, and then in that actual Tour de Tour Cup. Now, the last way to qualify, which is one of the more difficult ways to qualify for the Tour de Tour Cup, would be through our Q School, which we host at least twice a year. It's typically held sometime in May to June and in December. Um, of these uh, events, we take the top 10% of the final field. We give them an exemption to the Torture Cup for the following year. Um, like I mentioned, the Players Tour is the flagship um, program of our Junior Tour. I've had the pleasure of overseeing it for the last three years. I've seen it grow, and I just can't wait to see what 2024 has for us. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to, to, um, to Reynard here, who is the Senior Coordinator for the Torture Tour Cup. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time and meeting with us today. Uh, Dean here and I are in charge of running the Toyota Tour Cup, and we are extremely proud of uh, being a part of this tour. Uh, the Toyota Tour Cup is our most elite level tour with 362 members at this moment. Uh, this is a special tour in all of junior golf, we think, due to the fact you have to qualify in order to be a member. Like what William mentioned in the previous slide, there are four ways to qualify to get in. And the unique thing about our tour is you have to retain your exemption as a member of the Toyota Tour Cup. Uh, for example, in order to be exempt for 2024 next year, the boys need to place a top 10 and girls need to place a top six in a Toyota Tour Cup tournament sometime in the 2023 season. With that said, we have about 26 nationally ranked events conducted annually, and some of the biggest ones we run are our um, invitational events. These invitational events are considered our majors, essentially, as we put up um, during the tournament additional signage, we give enhanced tee gifts to the players, and we try to play them at um, the nicer golf courses as well. In order to play in our invitationals, uh, you have to meet uh, a invitational criteria to play in these tournaments. Uh, the criteria to play in these tournaments is you must be a past Toyota to Tour Cup champion, a top rank in junior golf scoreboard in Southern California specifically. Um, and junior golf scoreboard is a nationally known ranking website for junior golfers. Um, and to also play in these invitationals, you have to be on top of our points list or uh, in our top points list race in the Toyota to Tour Cup. Um, an example of one invitational event we hosted this year is the inaugural Max Homa Invitational, uh, where Max Homa actually made an appearance on the final day to meet and watch all, the, watch all the kids. And he also made a concluding speech at the end of the tournament, which was cool to experience. Uh, we also host uh, a series of four invitational events called the Toyota Tour Cup Patrick Cantley Series, which is partnered with Patrick Cantley himself um, and his sponsors. Uh, we just hosted one very recently at Mission Hills uh, country club a couple weekends ago and the next one is going to be on um, December 17th and 18th at Virginia Country Club where it will be the finale of um, these series events. Uh, we hosted the finale at Virginia Country Club last year as well um, and it was a great success as Patrick made an appearance. He also did a clinic with him and his golf coach uh, Jamie Mulligan for all the kids after the first round and he presented trophies at the awards ceremony. So uh, we hope we will have very similar success, just like last year. Uh, we also have a quick minute video in the next slide showing uh, a preview of how the finale was last year. Another thing we do for the players is we send the tournament results to Junior Golf Scoreboard, AJGA Golf Week, and Wagger. Uh, Wagger is a website uh, called uh, the World Amateur Golf Rankings. And all of these uh, websites are beneficial to the players as college coaches look at all of them for scouting purposes. And the last thing on the slide is we offer Toyota Tour Cup members the opportunity to be considered for one of our travel teams each year. There are seven team events we are a part of, such as the Boys and Girls Junior Americas Cup, Hogan Cup, Mary Cave, Boys and Girls North South Cup, and Challenge Cup. Um, in these events, we select players from our association to represent us in a team format. And players really enjoy the team atmosphere because it's very similar to a college team and event. So uh, now we are going to conclude the 
um, presentation with a quick minute video, and we're going to segue to Eddie um, after this. real quick guys hey kevin you might be muted there sorry can you hear me john yeah i can hear you but i think that the video was uh the volume on your computer's down um or you know try that one more time or we could just skip past it not a big deal uh oh sorry about that i didn't realize that the audio wasn't working um you know what at this point you know, it's just meant to be a quick little uh, synopsis. Yeah, let's go ahead and skip past it. So we'll turn it back over to Eddie. And thanks again, Ray and, and the team for presenting on the three levels of the tour. We're going to dive more into just, you know, is your student ready for junior golf at this point? We'll get into some more of those details here shortly. So Eddie, why don't you take the way? Thank you, Kevin. So is your student ready for junior golf competitions? I think many of them are, and they're looking to you, the, the PJ professional, to find out what is next for them. So uh, I'm really glad you're here today to talk about this. Um, they take lessons, they uh, they play and practice at your club. So we would like to uh, let you, or we would like you to let them know what the opportunities are out there. So uh, do they understand how to, uh, the game of golf? Are you teaching them not just swing, but course management? Do they understand how to keep a scorecard? Do they understand what ready golf is and club selection? Um, we, if they are, then uh, we think they might be great candidates for the junior tour. Uh, they play and practice at your facility. They seek instruction from PGA pros. They attend clinics and camps. So uh, if any of you out there have students that are looking to go to the next level, then I think the SCPJ junior tour is the uh, the right place for them. So uh, if you have any questions about the the program from JDT all the way through to uh, Choi Tour Cup, please uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to help in any way we can. All right. Thanks, Eddie. At this point, too, I'm going to dive into just the registration process. I know that's a question that probably comes up for a lot of juniors out there, especially with their coaches. Um, how do I register for the SCPJ Junior Tour? It's pretty simple. It's all, all done online these days. Uh, first things first, we would recommend that they go to our website, scpgajrtour.com, as you see in the top left-hand corner up there. And from there, you're going to see circled in red is that Join Now tab. So they're going to essentially click on that when they get to the homepage of our website. And that's going to take them directly to this next page here. From there, they're going to see some information about the JDT, the Players Tour, and the Toyota Tour Cup. If they click on the Learn More blue box beneath, that's where it's going to take them directly to that landing page for that appropriate tour, where they can find a lot more details and information specifically about those three different levels and learn if that is maybe the right fit for them. A lot of players will have questions during this process, and they'll contact us and ask, you know, the, the the common one is, should I be in the JDT or should I be in the Players Tour? So again, like Eddie mentioned, we're going to ask them a series of questions to try to figure out, you know, again, what's their experience level? How long have they been playing the game? Do they have competitive experience? Because that's a must for Players Tour. You have to have previous competitive experience already. And you really need to be at that stage a, a consistent bogey golfer or better. So sub 90 regularly on regulation length golf courses that are similar yardages to what we're playing on our tour. So. Those are some of the things that we're looking for and asking questions on to try to determine which level would be best for them. So they can find a lot of that information on this page. Once they decide that they want to apply for membership, they're going to go ahead and they can click on the blue box here that says apply for membership beneath those three levels. 
And at that point too, they can scroll down this page as well. And it's gonna take them to here, how to join the SCPJ Junior Tour. Again, they're basically gonna click apply for membership. It's going to create their online Blue Golf profile with their name, their birth, all their personal information that's housed in there. And once they send that to us, or once they submit that online, I should say, they'll then have to send us a copy of their birth certificate or passport so that that way we can verify their age and make sure that when we approve their membership, that they're in the correct age division and that all their information is lining up properly. So those are some of the things that we're looking for. And that's essentially uh, the process for application of membership. Once that application is approved by our team, they're, they're, the player is then going to receive an email from us. And that email is going to include a link that's going to take them directly to the rules quiz, our handbook, and the rules of golf. The rules quiz being the utmost important one there because a player has to complete that rules quiz before they can get on the golf course. So Blue Golf will not allow them to sign up for a tournament until that rules quiz is completed. There's a, a way in the system to prevent that. So that's really important for them again, but they are notified of that. It's on their email. It's also on their Blue Golf profile. So as soon as they sign up, there's like a disclaimer at the top header that says you must complete the rules quiz and it provides them a link to take them directly there as well. So player can't really miss it. It's right there in front of them. Um, but again, that rules quiz is really important because it ensures that at least we've gone through and asked them some questions about the rules. They might not know them. They might just click on a certain answer and guess it correctly, and that's perfectly fine. But we're just hoping that they learn something in the process, some of the basic rules before they get out there, um, which might help their experience a little bit as well. It's also really beneficial for uh, parents of, of young JDT players to learn the rules and, and know the importance of it because they're going to be out there caddying for the little ones and they're the ones that actually really need to know it. Uh, and it helps them, you know, uh, educate their, uh, their young ones all the better. Absolutely, John, you're, you're spot on on that. It, at the very least, we hope the parents learn something because if the parents learn, then hopefully the kids are learning as well. So absolutely it does suffice in that regard as well. So that's the application process. It's not, it's not too difficult. Again, there's a couple steps there, but if players go to our website, they can find all that information. And if for some reason they have difficulties, please feel free to direct them to us. And you know they can always send us an email or call us here at the office and we'd be happy to assist them as well. Another thing that hopefully most of you are aware of, but some PGA members might not be aware of, is that we, through our foundation, offer financial assistance through our grants program to kids that are in need. So as we all know, golf is an expensive game and competitive golf is even a lot more expensive. There are a lot of kids out there that need financial assistance and their families just can't afford uh, you know, to sustain their level of competition at this stage. So if a player does need financial assistance, I would again redirect them to our website there and you're gonna see circled in red that foundation tab over here in the middle right. And then from there, when they click on that, it's gonna take them to our foundation page and circled here in red at the bottom is that SCPGA foundation grant application. So they can at any point access our website fill out that application and send that to our foundation team so they can review the information that's there and determine the amount based on their membership level and all that, determine the amount that would be sufficient so that they can play enough tournaments to sustain their interest in the game. So again, that's our grant application. We do provide, I believe I could be wrong on this right now, but I believe it's over 30,000 a year in grants to our junior tour members. So it's a pretty big program. And it does provide a lot of financial assistance to those who are in need. So again, we don't ever want players to get discouraged. You know, golf's expensive. And if they go to the website and see that, wow, it's $160 to sign up for membership for the players tour. And then the tournaments are going to cost me, you know, $75 to $100. Again, that adds up pretty quickly. We don't want them to be discouraged because our grant application process does take care of, in many cases, all the funding for these kids. And in some other cases, at least it supplements it to some degree. So so, Kevin, yeah. would you say that that's a, uh, a service and an amenity and a benefit that sets us apart from other tours? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Now, I know there are some other tours that do offer some financial assistance. A, a lot of them are different, though. And they have different criteria for all of it. I know AJGA does as well. Not too sure about some of the other local programs, um, but I'm sure that there are some out there as well. But again, our foundation is um, very active in raising funds. Um, as you all know, for many different outreach activities, whether it be clubs for high schoolers who can't afford a set of golf clubs to begin their interest in the game at the high school level. And we also do the same for scholarships. We provide well over 100,000 plus per year in scholarships to kids that are graduating and going to college. 
And the grant program is uh, the third leg of that too, just a, a way to provide financial assistance to kids who are in need so they can sustain their interest in the game and play competitively. From there, again, this is one of my favorite topics, actually, something that a lot of people don't realize is that we have an advisory and an ethics committee uh, that we uh, that we answer to, essentially. Our advisory committee is comprised of 12 individuals, mostly PJ members, some college coaches, and some junior tour parents as well. We have a good group of people on there um, that are really active in helping us to take a step back, look at our programming, look at our policies, look at what we're doing and try to find ways to always get better and provide the best service we can to our juniors. So this committee will seek to provide guidance and direction on certain policies and long-term goals for us. And we meet about three to four times per year to discuss ways that we can improve and again, provide the best experience that we possibly can for our junior tour membership. So we're very happy and very excited with um, those that committee specifically and all that it brings to our junior tour members uh, on a yearly basis. And segueing from that, we also have an ethics committee. Now, this is one that most people probably don't realize, and we sort of hope most kids don't realize it, because if you know our ethics committee well, it's because you haven't done something right, unfortunately. Um, but as you know, with a junior tour program our size, 400 plus tournaments and 3,700 plus members, and these are kids, there is going to be cheating that happens on occasion, unfortunately. Um, I'll dive more into that in a second, but the ethics committee is comprised of three PJ members. They all sit on our advisory committee as well. So this is sort of a subcommittee of that. And they serve to uphold the integrity and sportsmanship of our tour and our members. And basically all documented incidents of alleged cheating or um, unbecoming behavior from parents and other individuals is brought forth before this committee so they can determine the best course of action therefore. And then in certain cases, suspensions and disqualifications are issued to juniors and suspensions to parents as well if they're not acting appropriately out there. That does happen from time to time, unfortunately. But the goal of this committee is always to provide the opportunity for the players to learn and to grow. Again, I'll, I'll kind of step back here now and say that again, cheating uh, will take place out there, unfortunately, at all junior tour levels. I speak to many other junior golf directors throughout the country and there's not a junior tour out there that doesn't have it to some degree, obviously. And especially the bigger programs are gonna have more of it with more kids out there. So the main thing that we always recommend to our kids, always try your best to keep an accurate score. That is so, so important, <clears throat> excuse me. But simultaneously, if something does occur out there on the golf course, make sure you bring it up to one of our staff members right away or bring it up to us at scoring so that we can start to ask those questions to the group and find out exactly what's taking place and what has happened. Um, oftentimes we're gonna get comments from parents and players after the fact, a week or two or a month later, so-and-so is a cheater. And we'll ask the question, okay, well, where did you see them cheat? Well, I don't know, I, he's not that good and he can't shoot those scores. Well, that's not enough evidence to say a player's a cheater, obviously. you know, We need sufficient evidence to label somebody with that term, obviously. So it's really, really important that if somebody sees any cheating take place, that they again notify us right away. And anytime our team is notified of cheating, the first thing we do, we gather all the evidence we possibly can. So we contact every single player in that group, first and foremost, and we write down their testimony. We ask them a series of questions, try to find out exactly what took place. And then we take all the different testimonies of every player and sometimes parents within that particular group or those who saw it, and we compare them all. And if we see that the stories are very similar um, in nature, then oftentimes that's a sign that the player did something wrong and uh, they were probably getting away with uh, the action of cheating, unfortunately. In which case we then are writing the full document, compiling all those testimonies and sending it to our ethics committee so they can review everything and they can determine if the player should therefore be disqualified and or suspended. So that does happen several times a year. Thankfully, it hasn't happened a ton this year. Um, we've had some issues of it and had a couple suspensions, but it seems to have been going down. Um, we like to think, hopefully, just through our committee's involvement and activity the past couple of years, that we've been really trying to be at the forefront of it the best we can so that players are more aware of the process. And we're seeing players speak up a lot more in scoring so we can avoid the aftermath of all this stuff happen as well. So. Again, if uh, you have a junior who has seen it on our tour or has experienced it in their group, 
please let them know that we do take these matters extremely seriously. They should inform us right away, uh, provide all the details they possibly can. If they're, especially if they're an eyewitness, they need to provide all the details of what they saw and experienced out there. And then we'll write down and figure out exactly what took place by contacting everybody in their group and gathering all that information and then taking it to our committee so they can make a determination on the best outcome there. So again, th those are two committees that most people probably aren't super familiar with, but hopefully provides you all with some a, a backstory there and some inside information um, of how to handle those situations if they ever come up in the future. Um, as we get near the tail end here, how we operate, uh, our team consists of seven full-time staff members, as you see here, along with a couple others that are on this call, and over 40 part-time staff members. Um, this is quite different from most other junior tours out there. Uh, most run based on a couple staff and a lot of volunteers or rules people. Um, we have over 40 part-time staff, so we employ a lot of people. Um, I want to say in the last 12 months alone, just because of turnover with part-time employees, we've hired over 50 people just in the last 12 months. So uh, we're very, very active in that regard and always trying to look for people who have experience in golf and are interested in working with juniors, which we'll get into here in a second on the next slide as well. But we do conduct roughly 10 tournaments per weekend from mid-January through mid-December. And then we do conduct weekday tournaments as well from mid-June through mid-August. Each tournament will consist of about five to six staff members, depending on the field size. And our staff functions will typically include course setup, which includes setting up the tees in the morning, uh, any course markings that are necessary, um, in some cases for our bigger events, obviously, all of our multi-day tournaments, such as our Players Tour two-day series and our Toyota Tour Cup events, there's whole locations involved, so we have to check whole locations as well in the morning, and a variety of other functions, such as setting up signage and things of that nature. We also have registration where players will check in, confirm their starting time, and we will inform them of where the range is and ask them to be at the first tee at least 10 minutes before their tee time, so that way they can be given their scorecard and all the local rules for the day. And again, that segues to starting where they receive that scorecard, the local rules, and then they begin their event, obviously, right on time. On course, officiating and pace of play is also really, really big for us. We like to have at least a few staff out there. We try to have at least one staff member for every four to six groups so we can monitor their pace. And so we can constantly be flowing between those few groups to check and make sure that they're not having any rulings issues or questions and answer uh, any questions they might have during the course of their round. And finally, there they will con, uh, conclude their round with scoring after the fact, as well as our awards presentation. And awards presentations do happen at the end of each division. So if we have at a player story event, um, our boys and girls 15 to 18 divisions, boys and girls 12 to 14, and boys and girls 9 to 11, that's six separate award ceremonies we're going to conduct within that tournament for the top three finishers in each age division. So they will receive a medal. And again, in our bigger events, like I mentioned before, Toyota Tour Cups, Players Tour Two Days, Series Championships, uh, they're really nice uh, glass crystal trophies um, from prize possessions as well. So that's in a nutshell how we operate. And at this time, I'm going to turn it back to Eddie really quick as we cover um, our field staff and how um, they're such a vital role. They play such a vital role for our tour as well. Hey, Kevin. You can imagine with uh, as many golf tournaments as we do, field staff is very, very important. We have a great team here in junior golf that puts together all the tournaments and plans an entire year out. But at the end of the day, all the packages are created. Everything is set up and done, sent to the team leaders. And it's up to our team leaders and teams of field staff to actually be the on-course operators of that golf tournament that day. So it's very important. Um, and we have a great group of field staff members, a very diverse group of field staff members who are dedicated and really, really care about what they do. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, it's weekdays only during uh, the spring and fall seasons in the summer uh, from those summer months when the kids are out of school. The weekday tournaments are conducted between, you know, the months of June and August. The responsibilities are, are uh, as what Kevin just mentioned, it's about uh, registration, uh, starting, rules officiating, pace of play, scoring and presentation of awards after each division has completed play. Uh, in order to be a field staff member, there's an interview process that um, we go through with them. Uh, we try to find out if, uh, you know, what their interests are and gauge what their experience is. Uh, they must have golf experience and some golf knowledge in order to be up there because it, it moves pretty quickly and we, uh, we all have to communicate. And so uh, having that golf knowledge and experience it a little bit in golf. It doesn't have to be extensive experience, but, you know, have played maybe in some amateur events or, you know, has been playing a long time or might even be a good player. 
Um, all that lends to making every uh, making them more successful and our tour more successful. Uh, an individual must be at least 18 years of age. Uh, we offer a very flexible work schedule. Uh, we try very hard to uh, make sure that our, our field staff members understand that this is a part-time job and we get that. And if they ever need to take time off or need to take a, a weekend or a weekend day off uh, for whatever they want, we don't, we don't care. As long as they give us a two weeks notice, you're guaranteed to have that time off and uh, we just won't, you know, utilize you. On the other side of that coin, um, we put the schedules out. Kevin works very hard putting the schedules together for uh, 40 plus people. It's, if you can imagine, it's a daunting task to put, uh, to hold together uh, or put together a part-time schedule for these people. So um, if they haven't requested that time off, uh, then we send the schedules out and we expect our field staff members to be there and to work on, uh, to be on time. Um, starting salary uh, for uh, field staff is $16 an hour. We off also offer a mileage reimbursement of 65 and a half cents per mile driven. Um, and we also offer uh, $15, uh, $15 for uh, meal reimbursement. So um, being out on the golf course um, with kids um, in a team atmosphere, it's a pretty good part-time job. It really is. It's a lot of fun. And so uh, we're always looking for uh, for qualified people, people that first have a heart for kids, uh, like working in a team uh, environment. Um, if uh, people are interested in that, um, if you know anybody that's interested in, that might be interested in joining us, please give them my contact information. Happy to talk to them. Anyway, thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Eddie. Um, that pretty much concludes uh, the presentation for today. I know uh, hopefully John might have a couple questions here for us, but uh, as we do conclude, I just want to say too that we appreciate everyone's time. We hope you've learned something new about our junior tour, at least, um, and at least got a, a face to the name. So if your juniors have any questions or you have any questions about our program, you can always email, call us at any time. We'd be more than happy to talk. Uh, we enjoy those conversations. We get a lot of kids that will contact us over the course of the year or their parents, obviously, and they'll ask questions just about junior golf. And is my kid ready? And what should he be playing? And, and you know, what are the next steps that they should be taking at this stage in their development? And what is college golf about? Whether or not they're a member of our program and whether or not they even intend to join our program, because maybe it might not be the best fit for them. Maybe they live in South San Diego and it's a better fit for them to play San Diego Junior Golf or North County Junior Golf or future champions. That's okay. We'd still be happy to, to answer their questions and point them in the right direction because at the end of the day, we just want to help these kids develop, help them succeed, help them to have a great time regardless of whether or not they do play with us. And obviously for those who do, uh, you know, we really appreciate them and we hope to see many more kids keep continuing to play um, with our program as well. But we will provide that service for anybody and answer the questions that they might have and try to point them in the right direction. At the end of the day, we want to keep developing the next generation of junior golfers. And that's our, our primary focus at this point. Fantastic. So thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, William, Ray, and Eddie, thank you on behalf of the Education Committee for the SEPGA. Uh, really grateful that you came on this morning and uh, and presented on uh, on uh, the junior tours. Uh, for all the PGA members that were on this morning's webcast, you will receive one PDR credit for joining the Catalyst. Also, uh, we're going to send out the recording of this morning's presentation. And in that uh, email, we will put the contact information for uh, all four of these guys, Kevin, William, Ray, and uh, and Eddie, uh, you have questions, um, feedback, feel free to reach directly out to them. They are a uh, uh, wonderful resource and um, you know, don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, thank you guys for presenting this morning and everybody uh, for the SCPJ membership. Thank you for supporting the catalyst. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thank you.